Hello, my name is Chris Mavis with the Hennepin County Surveyor's Office, and today I'd like to discuss the value of the Public Land Survey System corners and the monuments that represent those corners, you know, going through what these things are and why they matter. So at its most basic level, the Public Land Survey System is a reference grid. It's a legal reference grid, and it's established by the federal government 1785. The basic purpose of this public land survey system was to divide and convey lands from the, you know, from the federal government, the public domain, to private landowners selling, you know, selling property. It's a, you know, it's a square grid network of lines and monuments, and and you know sort of the details behind it is that you have these things called townships which are six by six miles and inside each regular township you have these things called sections that are you know about a mile by a mile but the key part of the public land survey system is that it was the origin um, for basically all property descriptions or legal descriptions within the state of Minnesota and pretty much within all of the public land survey system states. If we just look at these details a little bit more. So the graphic is showing, okay, well, here's what a township is. It's roughly six by miles by six miles, generally square, um, but they have designators to them. So townships are um, designated by being north or south of an initial point, east or west of an initial point. So if you knew where the initial point was and you were a hundred townships north of that, you knew where basically where you were within that public land survey system. So if you, you know, if you think about it in kind of modern terms, this really was like one of the, I mean, it was the first um, geocoding system. Um, that was ever made. Now in each one of the townships, let's just say it's a regular township, you're going to have one mile by one mile um, squares called sections within those within each one of those regular townships. And if we look at the graphic, um, section one is going to start up in the northeast, you know, go over to the west to section six, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, all the way until you get down to section 36, which is in the southeast corner of the particular township. And then each one of the sections could further be subdivided into its aliquot parts. So you could have, for example, the northwest quarter of the section, or you could divide that quarter into other quarters. So down in the southeast part of that upper graphic, you could have the, you know, the northwest, northwest quarter of the southeast quarter, for example. Or I could have the west half of the southwest quarter. These are those are what's known as aliquot parts. But you know those. That's how this that's how this system was devised. You know you have those overall um, initial points. You have townships that are based on those initial points. Townships are further divided into these sections, and then the sections are further divided into their aliquot parts. And 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 there you go. Now we have the beginnings of this. Um, distribution system to convey land. So the public land survey system covers basically all of the states except for the colonial states in Texas. Uh, Minnesota has um, elements from the fourth principal meridian and elements from the fifth principal meridian in the, in the, in the public land survey system. So we we're kind of unique in that way. We, we have, you know, we have a little bit of each, uh, but again, you know, knowing where the initial point is for the, like the fifth principal meridian, way down in Arkansas, you know, up here in Hennepin County, we're 117, 118, 119 townships north of that uh, initial initial point for the for the for the fifth principal meridian. So it's you know this really eloquent system. You know what does the system look like on the ground? You know, and a lot of parts of the public land survey states maybe have been obscured over the over time, but you know, like, hey, if you've ever been up in a plane, 
you know, over Iowa, North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, right? Have you ever flown over uh, farm, what we would say farm country, you know, you look out the window and you see all these squares on the, on the face of the earth. That's a representation of the public land survey system on the ground. You know, looking at these things, just one mile squares by one mile squares, roads generally followed along the one mile squares. And this is, this is how the system was, how do I say it? made to look on the face of the earth. Common terms that we throw around related to corners, my, you know, corners are the intersections of these lines. Monuments represent these, represent the locations of the, of the corners. But we throw these things around like section corners and quarter corners, you know, in a general, um, usual section, let's say. So section corners exist at the outside corners of the section. Quarter corners exist um, halfway between those section corners. So from a section corner to a section corner, generally a mile, 5,280 feet. From a section corner to a quarter corner, it's half mile, All right? From this quarter corner to the next section corner, half mile. That's how this, you know, how it works. The, you know, sort of the naming conventions, you know, again, it just gets generalized out in, in, in a lot of different ways. Uh, but like, for example, this is section 16. If we looked at the east side of section 16, you know, it says it's the west quarter of section 15. Well, that's the adjoiner, right? But it could also be the east quarter, 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 corner of section 16. I, you know, so people get really loose in their, in their, use of of what they're talking about <laughs> you know so we might get a phone call hey i'm looking at the east quarter of section 16 right you know hey we know what they're talking about or i'm looking at the you know the southeast corner of section 16. You know, somebody tomorrow could come up and say i'm looking at the southwest corner of section 15. so you, you, just by knowing how the public land survey system is laid out you know you can you can start to get into this vocabulary of what people are talking about. The original government surveyors, at least in Minnesota, you know, they're starting in the 1840s, they're rolling on through Minnesota, uh, through the 1890s, a little bit after that, but they're using, you know, pretty rudimentary equipment. There's a lot of people in the field. You know, you got some, you know, you got people that are dragging a chain, a 66 foot chain through the woods, likely. You, know, you got people running a compass, giving you good directions, and you're, you know, you're, it's really physical labor, labor. And then when you're coming up to set a monument that represents this corner, you know, I'm coming up to it at a half mile or a mile, I'm going to plunk something in the ground that people can find. And, you know, looking around, okay, well, what do I have, right? You know, maybe I just have a, a wood post. In a lot of cases, this is what they were setting in the ground is setting wood posts. You know, a lot of Minnesota was forested, setting wood posts. If you're out in, you know, Western Minnesota, not a lot of trees out there. So you're digging things like, you know, you're making a mound and you're doing some pit work or you haven't set in a stone. Something that when people come behind you, they can find it. Because this monument that was set, wood post, mound, a rock, whatever, that's representative of uh, where the corner is supposed to be. And then also, when, you know, once you stick this thing in the ground, they, the government surveyors were taking um, reference ties to things that were around them. So if I'm standing in the middle of the woods and I, you know, drop a wood post in the ground and then I'm, okay, now I stand up and I'm like, okay, well, how can I tie this thing out? so that if the monument goes missing, it can be reset. That's really what these bearing trees were for. They, they were there so that if the, you know, the monument representing the corner went missing for some reason, the bearing trees would stand as a, you know, as a witness to where that, that location was. And they were taking measurements to things that were, you know, sort of relatively close and they were, and, and, so they could reference the location of the monument 
um, to those to those bearing trees and they were you know scribing uh, face blazing these bearing trees you know put there's a lot of action going on around each one of these around each one of these corners to ensure that people who were coming behind them had that had that good location so these original government surveyors were out there you know this giant field crew they were taking these notes and they were you know, taking measurements, right? They were dragging the chain. They were telling what direction they were going, you know, using a compass. They were establishing monuments at these corners. They were referencing bearing trees, but they were also doing some assessment while they were out there. So, hey, did I cross a stream? Did I cross a river? Did I intersect a lake? You know, did I, was I going up the hill or was I going down a hill? They were assessing all this terrain. And then they were also talking about what the land was like. Good timber, poor timber. That could be a decision, you know, that could be something, a purchaser's decision, you know, tree matrix or whatever. Hey, I'm a logger, I need to find good timber. Or was the soil good or poor, you know, for farmers? If a farmer was like, hey, I'm looking at this piece of property, what kind of soil does it have, right? First rate, second rate, third rate, fourth rate, so on. So they were, they were collecting a lot of information while they were performing this survey work. This is what, uh, you know, an example of bearing trees uh, related to a monument. All right, so you got a monument in the middle, you know, starting in the upper left, I got a white pine, then if I counterclockwise around, I got a fir tree and a cedar tree and another fir tree blazing all of those I'm scribing it hey this is the you know this is the corner that we're at taking notes how far away each one of these trees are hey, it's a 24 inch white pine it was 67 links you know in this um, direction so that was happening during the original survey work well you know, 160 years later, 170 years later, we're doing the same thing at Hennepin County. We are maintaining the monuments at those locations. They're different now. You know, it's not a wood post anymore. For example, this is a, this is a tie sheet on the right-hand side. It's a cast iron monument. It's in the road. You know, this is a paved, paved road out here, but we're taking ties the same as they did um, during the original surveys. If the monument goes missing for some reason, road construction or whatever, um, the ties that were established on this, on this tie sheet can help reestablish that monument's location. Uh, so it's, you know, same processes uh, used today as they, as they were way back. So when the surveyors were running around, you know, doing all this manual labor and dragging chains and, you know, taking directions with compasses and stuff like that. Notes, those notes would get reduced to making a map. So this is a GLO plat. This happens to be for, you know, 28, Township 28, North Range, uh, 24 West, 4th Principal Meridian. Uh, should look, you know, to me, it looks very familiar. It's inside Hennepin County. You know, one of the things that's almost right smack in the middle of this, of this map is Lake Harriet. And, um, you know, so this is, this is what it looked like when the original surveyors went through. Uh, but all those notes that were taken were used to make this map, this plat. And, you know, there were, there were a lot of uses for these things. One, you know, for contractual purposes to pay the survey crews. Okay, there's that, right? So, a map, you know, a plat map was kept at the surveyor's general's office. One was shipped back to the Washington, D.C. And then another one was, you know, intended to go to the local land office for people to really kind of walk up to the counter, you know, and put their finger on a map and say, I want to buy that. Uh, so these maps were were used for a lot of different things and very valuable. We still go back to these these uh, today. We look in Minnesota. Just in Minnesota, there were about three hundred thousand 
uh, monument set. So 300,000 corners were established uh, throughout Minnesota and Hennepin County. We have about 2,500 scattered, you know, around in Hennepin County, right? All these section corners and quarter corners out there. St. Louis County, we got 26,000 um, public land survey corners that were established. I mean, that's a lot. You know, 300,000 of these things scattered throughout Minnesota. That, that, if you just think about Minnesota, that was a lot of work. But then you think about all the other public land survey system states. I mean, that was a tremendous, tremendous amount of work to establish all of these things. And they're, you know, they're really important. And why do they matter? Go back to it, to the second slide. Public land survey system defines the boundaries of almost every property in Minnesota. So those original descriptions were based by and large, almost 100% on the public land survey system. Land surveyors to this day still use the public land survey system corners slash monuments to define boundaries. And the public land survey system just by itself is a framework, the framework for a lot of digital data. Just think about how much uh, digital data is based on the public land survey system. We have parcels, municipal boundaries, um, uh, roadways. I mean, there's, you think of all these things that we use digitally and the origins of those go back to uh, the public land survey system. So accurate corners, accurate monuments for those corners. Your monument is the physical, the physicalness of that actual corner. They ensure location. So if we step back to this deed, it looks like from 1855, the very first part of this deed references the southwest quarter of the southeast quarter of section four in township 28 of range 24. Right there, right back to the public land survey system. Now this thing, this might have been a bigger piece of property, but this is getting further subdivided as time goes on, right? So maybe in 1880, you know, 1920, 1950, so on and so forth, all the way up to modern day. If you look at that that chain, the you know you have to go all the way back to the original description, and there it is referencing the public land survey system in subdivision um, platting. Modern times, there's you know, generic subdivision for Hennepin County. We look at this, this subdivision has been tied into the public land survey system. We can see some monumentation around the outer parts of the subdivision. And that's, that's really to ensure that this, you know, new subdivision plat fits where it's supposed to within Hennepin County that we don't have overlaps and gaps and all that other sort of stuff going on with this with this soon to be new neighborhood. One of the hot topics over the last you know few years has been writing easements uh, along streams, for example. So you're doing some you know you're doing some protection work without having accurate monumentations representing those corners, monumentation representing those corners of the public land survey system. You don't know where this stream is on, you know, I mean, you, you, you do, but you don't have a, you don't have a way of referencing it to that legal framework called the public land survey system. When you're writing a description, you're referencing the public land survey system. So you need those, those accurate corners slash monuments um, in order to ensure that your legal description says, okay, here's the stream, right? But here's the easement that, that is written in relationship to the stream that references the public land survey system. You know, same thing can be said about utility work. So if, you know, without, 
good accurate public land survey system I wouldn't know where um, easement rights end and private interests begin right that's a that's a boundary line if we if we think about a subdivision along a road or, or whatever right that subdivision many many generations before had referenced the public land survey system through a property description so that you know you, you got to be able to you got to be able to tie in to that public land survey system you know even down in say in minneapolis right we got this little we got this twist along the river in downtown minneapolis but you know that original plat was again based on the on the public land survey system so the blocks with inside of it right the streets that all those kinds of things do relate to the public land survey system so you know connecting to that system in modern times give me gives me a you know an accurate location of where this you know particular lot and block in downtown minneapolis exists on the face of the earth right so let's talk about digital data now hennepin county inherited their digital data from the city of Minneapolis and you know prior to digital data this this was all this information these text parcel geometries were all on you know paper let's just say paper or mylar or something like that where you know people were hand drafting these geometries on this on this paper so they knew hey well here's all these parcels and you know here's how we collect taxes for example well you know over time that that paper gets heads up digitized or you know, scanned or however it happens into some digital rendition of what was on the paper and there's some inherent inaccuracies about doing that you know by if you just looked at the digital geometries by themselves without any other information you'd say hey they they look good you know the the areas are fine um, they relate to each other pretty okay but once you put something behind it like an aerial image which you know for many is considered one of the most accurate pieces of spatial information that you have you know, for Hennepin County, we we actually use our control points for aerial imagery are, in a lot of cases, our public land survey system monuments. So it's tied into that. It's already tied into that system. So when you lay this heads up digitized uh, information over something that's you know more accurate than the heads up information, you get what what looks like here. We have a you know a big shift to the west in the geometries for this for this one small area of Minneapolis. It's probably 10 or 15 feet shift to the west. Now, when you have these kinds of discrepancies, then you get a lot of phone calls. You know, people are always calling in and saying, "Hey, the parcel line looks like it's going through my house," or there's other types of questions in it. You know, also for decision making, if you don't really have good accurate digital data you don't necessarily have good accurate decision making because you have some question about the accuracy of this digital data well back in 2006 bill brown a former county surveyor for hennepin county um, initiated a project where they would are were going to reestablish the monuments for the public land survey system now and you know over time Monuments had been there and then they were kind of gone and then there were some city monuments, but there was, you know, there wasn't really a, a you know, something that said, hey, this thing, this monument that we have is actually the northeast corner of this particular section. It, it, it was, it just kind of got lost, right? So the project was really to reestablish that public land survey system and then using those, you know, the new monumentation, coordinate good Hennepin County coordinate values on that monumentation to be able to go back and use coordinate geometry and recreate all of the you know 125,000 parcels that are in Minneapolis so that there was better 
digital data that could be available for anybody and everybody to use. So this is what it looked like before. After the project, it looked like this. You know, if we again take that digital geometries, the digital data, and put it over an aerial image, and we look at it now after, right, establishing good coordinates on our on our public land survey system, recogoing property descriptions and plats, and all those other sorts of roadways and things like that, railroads. This is what it looked like, and this looks really good. You know, so your confidence level in being able to make decisions from this from this information is much higher than it had been in the past. So it's, I mean, lots and lots of benefits for this more accurate digital data, which again was based on those accurate coordinate values placed on the public land survey system, um, corner slash monuments. So having you know, trust in your location means a lot, you know, not only internally at the surveyor's office, but also externally for consumers of our data. So a few years ago, I went through a um, national standard for spatial data accuracy study of Hennepin County parcels. And it's, you know, it's part of the national spatial, you know, infrastructure, it's, it, it's a statistical test to say uh, my digital data that I have. So my expectation would be that my digital data would match what you would find out in the field, in the, you know, in the world physically um, to a specific distance, right? So I have this confidence level. When, when we did the spatial um, data accuracy study, again, you can do this in Excel. It's not that hard. You start crunching the numbers, you go through, you go through uh, the analysis. And what we found at Hennepin County is that we have a 95% confidence level, you know, high confidence, that our digital information would be within a couple of feet of where you would physically find it out in the world. And I think that's really, really good. Um, you know, to find, to be able to use that digital information to find things in the field, to make decisions, you know, saying, hey, this is within a couple of feet of where it actually exists, real world, is, is, is good. And on the left-hand side, there's nothing better than you know, when you have somebody give you a compliment, this ha this is a text that one of the people in our office received from a survey crew that was out at 35W and 494 around a Best Buy campus. You know, what they're saying is that, okay, hey, we're using your GIS info to look for monuments in this area, right? So they, they took our parcel geometries down from the, you know, open data site or FTP site or whatever, and they developed search coordinates for it for those for those um, parcel vertices, let's say. And then they're saying, hey, we're finding monuments at the northwest corner of this intersection within two tenths of your GIS lines. Not bad. I mean, that's right there is a huge statement. It's a huge compliment to the accuracy of our Hennepin County digital data. Two tenths is like two and a half inches. If I can as a consumer of digital data have you know confidence that i'm going to be within a couple and a half inches of where you say it is i can make some really good decisions so the you know importance of this whole thing i mean it, it really does start with the corners the monuments that represent the corners the co the coordinates that are on those monuments starts with those and it really gives you certainty in spatial locations if i don't have that certainty in spatial locations then i don't have a lot of confidence confidence you know if i don't have a lot of confidence that equals in the business world probably more time which equals probably more money you know that deals directly with business enablement and by maintaining those 
the monuments, the corners of the public land survey system were going to benefit our future generations as they, you know, further subdivide property or buy or sell or whatever, um, you know, putting in new national forests, for example, you will have a direct benefit on our future generations by maintaining that public land survey system. So thank you. Uh, again, this is Chris at Hennepin County. My contact information is there. And if you have any questions, please feel free to send me an email. Thank you.